Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday all day. You are on Big Game Hunters on the Magna Search Group TV network. My name is Michael Flintz. I'm sitting here with the big Jason Berard. Today we're talking to you about some of the top companies to watch out for in 2016. Uh, a little bit of a framework or insight on industry verticals that we think are going to be hot. And uh, because it's a holiday week down in the United States, we got some bibs and bobs to uh, maybe stimulate some conversation over turkey dinner. Yeah, I think the, uh, the 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 big thing about the companies to watch in 2016 that we're going to feature is a lot of people are talking about how this winter is going to be dead unicorn season. We yeah. see these ridiculously high valuations on a lot of startups and a lot of tech companies. Um, but and, there's a uh, lot of money being thrown at them. Oh, there's lots of money being invested in these companies, and yep. uh, so I think it's interesting to see you know some of the companies that we've profiled here. I think yeah. in the at the end of the day, regardless of valuations, there's some cr so some super creative companies that are getting started, and that's key. I, I, th I think that creative element is really yeah, key. Yeah, people are going like. Wow, Wow, I wish I would have thought of that, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, uh, one company that I th thought was really cool is it's called 23andMe, and this is backed by Google. You know, these guys allow uh, users to study their ancestry, their genealogy, and inherit traits. So basically, um, it, it allows proactive planning as it pertains to uh, preventative disease, preventative health care, you know, uh, preventative maintenance in terms of doing the right things uh, based on what maybe diseases or, or, or things that you could contract based on your genealogy. So yeah. for example, they could do some tests on uh, cystic fibrosis and uh, you know no you don't know with some certain degree of certainty you know whether or not uh, it's something that could that could affect you. yeah so more than just figuring out where if you were like 50% Irish and 30% Scottish and yeah that, yeah like that maybe actually understanding the body understanding where you've come from from a from a from I guess a core perspective like a very organic well, Bruce, th this is Bruce probably Bay. as organic as it can go, but it's pretty interesting as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, speaking of organic, uh, one of the one of the companies that I've been uh, uh, keeping my well, actually I've been keeping a lot of radar on the food industry. And we'll we'll t we'll circle back to that towards the end of the show. But uh, a lot of companies out there that are growing very fast or sold for a lot of money are in the uh, in the you know the meat production or or, or fresh produce. And um, what we're seeing is you know people really caring about what they put in their bodies, and that's ultimately translating into you know companies starting up these amazing concepts concepts like meatless meat or, you know, uh, like vegan eggs where uh, we can actually sustain the, sustain the world. And there's a company called Pharmago. And what yep. they do is they go and, uh, well, they go, Pharmago goes, they will deliver freshly produced produce, vegetables, fruits, uh, and bring them right to your door. So you can order right from a local farmer uh, yep. that's nearby. You can eliminate a lot of the middlemen, a lot of the, uh, maybe the processed aspect of your food or, or any of sort of the pesticides, order organic. And I think we're gonna see more of that, you know, eliminating that barrier from your food to to your, your stomach at, at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. Uh, you're absolutely correct on that. Um, I, I personally, I take that vantage point with, with my health and, 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 you know, what I look for, you know, in companies. Uh, and. and the, the farmer concept is, you know, playing on the Uber of everything, you know, yeah. delivering what you want right to your doorstep. You know, there was companies that I, I profiled under that framework of Uber of everything, uh, which would be Spoon Rocket, which is uh, $6 organic meals delivered to you within 10 minutes. So the oh, cities that they're set up. Perfect. Yeah. They network with, uh, you know, different service providers. And within 10 minutes, you get organic food to your door for six bucks. It, it's so interesting. Like it, there's people that we're even talking about when you talk about the Uber effect, like, um, you know, executives that are. Uh, selling their cars and just using Uber and saving money. So think about if you had like a seventy thousand dollar car or something like that, and uh, fifty thousand dollar car, you sell it, and then you just use Uber everywhere you go. Yeah, yeah, no, that that makes sense. You and know, you can do work in the car. You, it's like your own chauffeur. Like that's where we're seeing. Like if that's happening at an executive level, and and obviously Uber at, at its core is helping the day to day. Yeah. Like what else are we going to see? Because we call it the Uber of things because it's had such a, a huge impact. But you know, more than just companies, like some industries that we're going to start seeing is obviously the sharing economy, the Internet of Things. Uh, but what are some more traditional industries that have seen a lot of growth in the well, last couple? Well, when you're talking about executives in the share, in the sharing economy, you know, there, there's a, there's a group called Industrious, and it's basically an office sharing uh, business framework that focuses on uh, senior level executives, you know, you know, law professionals, a lot of uh, entrepreneurial type individuals that maybe don't have. Um, uh, an infrastructure in their home office, or they need that people interactivity. You know, like get, getting getting around individuals that kind of yep. uh, create that 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 peer or that work environment that you sure. might not have as a small business. Uh, they're set up in ten uh, ten cities across the United States, uh, and I like what they do because it, it's it's. 
it, it creates this business environment that, that allows that lone soldier to be part of a team. Right. And that's totally aligned with what you just talked about with the sharing economy. Yeah. And then in terms of like some of the industries that we're going to see, you know, increasing over the last bit, like I, I mentioned the sharing economy, I mentioned the, um, uh, the internet of things will be a big one, augmented reality, but what are some more of the traditional ones that you've seen a lot of growth in so far? Well, the, the, the last one that kind of fits the, the line of conversation that we have today would be a company called Betterment. And basically, they're geared towards millennials uh, in terms of planning for their future. So it's an investment um, uh, website portal. And they basically have really low um, you know, finance fees and offer advice in terms of banking for the future. So that kind of rounds out that whole internet of everything, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, I think, I think one of the things, too, is, is about the Betterment thing is millennials and financials, like, just... I know that they end the same, but they do not go together. I mean, we're 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 taught completely different advice, you know. Well, well you got to work for the next uh, you know fifty plus years at minimum, right? Oh, um, it's it's wild. Like millennials have it have it definitely in tough, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Well, w w one thing that we also were looking at with regards to what happened this year, you know, especially in the United States, the, the rebound of the housing market has seen uh, an increase in in uh, associated businesses as it pertains to real estate, uh, real estate offices, brokerages. Uh, they're 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 busier. There's, there's an investment and everybody's uh, looking to either upgrade where they're living or, or put some renovations in place. So building finishing contractors and real estate offices saw sales growth of over 15% year over last already so far in 2015. Architectural and engineering firms grew by 14%, and foundation structure and building exterior contractors were up 10.5%, which I think is very interesting because it speaks to the health of the economy here in North America. And typically, uh, you know, with uh, what happens in the United States, you know, we see that overflow up here in Canada, and that, that's what we're absolutely hoping for in 2016. Back to what we, we talked about at the beginning of the show, the, the two industries that were profiled that I thought found really interesting on my list was one of the number one fastest growing sectors in the United States is oil seed and grain farming, which is up 20% year over last. And uh, specialty food stores uh, made it on my list as well. And uh, we talked a little about what, what people put in their body. Yeah, like it's wild. It's wild. Yeah, it's wild. It, we we both watched that movie Cowspiracy. You know, what did you think about that? Like, what was your perspective of what what is in tune with the consumer. If I was to recommend any documentary for this year, it would be 100% Cowspiracy. Cowspiracy, I mean, yeah. For the thought-provoking element of uh, you know, food production and not understanding what the repercussions of food production have on our environment and our bodies and everything in between, um, that's, a, that's just a documentary that will literally blow your mind and actually change the way that you view your food. The most interesting part of this entire conversation is the fact that we decided to talk about it on Thanksgiving. So we want you guys to go out, have a big meal, enjoy your family and friends. Hunt the big game. Think about what, uh, what you're thankful for and get ready to start off 2016 as we go through this crazy holiday season with a smile on your face and entrepreneurial attitudes on doing, being better tomorrow than you are today. Jason? Big Game Hunters, it's Wednesday, Wednesday all day, as Michael likes to say. My name is Jay, and we're going to see you on Friday. Friday, all day. Boom. We'll